Hi, thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary Baptist Church in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. It's election season here in the U.S., and today Pastor Chad has a special message about how Christians should respond when faced with political decisions. Life Notes can be found by visiting calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. We'll be looking at Romans chapter 13 for today's discussion. Now here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Romans chapter 13. Romans 13 is our text uh, today. And if you are at any of our campuses and you do not have a Bible, then uh, if you're at uh, Sweetwater or our Parker campus, grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. If you're at our North campus, uh, there's Bibles available. Uh, Just go grab one of those, turn to page 1,127, that's page 1127, and you'll be able to join us uh, and follow along. And as always, if you're at any of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then please take one. We want you to have God's Word and read God's Word. And if you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, please message us. The service host is available right now. Or you can email us at calvaryaz.com and we will get you a Bible because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, I just want to apologize to those who are planning on coming to the lead class tomorrow afternoon. Uh, And uh, just to say, I'm sorry we have to reschedule it, but the truth is I'm just not man enough to do it. And, you know, and I just hate admitting that. Uh, any, any guys in here hate admit being weak? Yeah, if you're not raising your hand, liars. Uh, it's like, I mean, because I don't, I don't want to ask for help. I don't want to say, oh, I can't do this. But you know what? Uh, I, I've been battling my voice thing for like almost two weeks. And, and it prevented me from being on Main Street Thursday night with the incredible volunteers and all the families. And you know that I was cringing inside because I wanted to be out there shaking hands and saying hi to people and seeing all the cute kids and all that stuff. And I, I just want you to know that I put myself in time out. Well, I mean, my wife encouraged it, okay? And, and you know, because I don't know about you guys, but um, Meralda kind of looks at me with that look that you would at a, at a 12-year-old that's been disobedient. And goes, um, you know, you shouldn't really schedule lead on the weekends that you preach. You aren't who you used to be and you can't do everything. And of course, I disagreed with her when she first said it. And so now, uh, as much as I hate being weak, I even dislike more not being right. So, uh, you know, I just thought I'd share it publicly so uh, you would understand that I am grieving not being able to, but we did reschedule it for November 24th, and I hope that uh, those that were signed up can make it, and, uh, and I hope that uh, uh, you wives will stop looking at your husband that way, because uh, we don't like being scolded. Uh, hey, in, uh, in a couple of days, Americans will go to the polls and make the most important decision in the history of civilization. Not. Hey, is anyone else tired of the rhetoric, the accusations, the political ads, the mailers, the phone calls, the texts, and the Facebook feuds? I mean, the constant barrage of noise telling us what to think and how to vote. Uh, I, I, I've had enough already. I am politicked off. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, in a couple of days, it's over. So uh, there we go. Uh, Now, let me just say, if you are a citizen of this country and you are qualified to vote, you should vote. I mean, we are privileged to participate in the greatest democracy on the face of the earth, and God has given you the privilege, the opportunity to participate. You should use that influence uh, to vote and hopefully vote biblical values when you're doing it. And and for the record, by the way, I will never tell you who to vote for. It's not my job and it's not my calling, okay? I have strong convictions and you're free to ask me in private conversation when you buy lunch. Uh, <laughs> or take me golfing, I'm, I'm good either way. Um, but I will encourage you to vote for biblical values of pro-life, pro-family, and pro-justice, okay? Just, just saying. So today I want, us to, I want us to look at God's viewpoint, 
Okay, this is my understanding. I get done with this sermon. If you don't agree with what I've said, uh, that's okay. You know, uh, but this is how I understand Scripture speaking into our politics. And I just want to begin by reminding you uh, to think about what the Apostle Paul said to the Philippian church in chapter 3, verse 20. He said, but our citizenship, our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we await a savior. Okay, so our citizenship is not of this world. So if you are a follower of Jesus, if you believe that Jesus actually is the one and only son of God and savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, I hope and pray that you want to at least entertain what God's viewpoint might be and understand scriptures and their take on politics. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, then uh, this may give you some insight and hopefully lead you to that place where you go, hey, I can, I can be a part of this, not because of what we think about politics, but because of who Jesus is and how he has uh, given his life to save yours. So Romans chapter 13 Verses one through seven. This is the Apostle Paul's uh, treatise, if you will, on government. He says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, then be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes, For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Um, I just wanna share some thoughts uh, as we head into... uh, what seems to be a more divisive, you know, every, year, every four years it's divisive. It always has been, but maybe a less couth, more divisiveness. Anyway, so here's just a couple of thoughts uh, that uh, are based in this text and beyond. First of all, God is not a member of any political party, okay? God does not endorse any candidate for president. God doesn't support or favor Democrats, Republicans, Greens, or Libertarians. And for the record, this may shock some of you, God isn't even an American. (laughs) That's right, some of you are praying to a foreigner. Uh, Don't know if you've thought about that, but it's reality. The truth is, Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is above the president of the U.S., And one day, Scripture tells us that every knee will bow. Okay? Every knee, which means Republicans, Democrats, socialists, communists, even atheists. And they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's every single person. So please don't equate Jesus with a party unless it's the wedding party of the Lamb. Okay, that's the party that he wants you to be a part of. That's why he gave his life for you. See, the kingdom of God isn't about politics. And and in case you're wondering, there's no voting in heaven. Okay, because Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords and he reigns. The kingdom of God isn't about politics, it's about people. People of every tribe, every language, and every nation. So Jesus doesn't endorse a party or a candidate He is looking for people who endorse, support, and serve him. In other words, Jesus is looking for followers, not candidates. When did you realize that? Jesus is looking for followers, not candidates. And and by the way, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, we, we want you to be. Because Jesus is the one who can change your life. We just sang that song about that. He changes everything. 
and he will forgive your sins and he will uh, give you eternal life and he will begin that process of setting you free from the things that destroy your life right now. So uh, if you wanna talk about that, see us after the service, our prayer team, our pastors, at least fill out a connect card and let us know you wanna talk about that. So Jesus is looking for followers, not candidates. And, and here's a question you and the Holy Spirit get to wrestle with. Are you supporting Jesus or are you asking Jesus to support your candidate? You see, God isn't a member of a political party. And second truth, whoever God votes for will win the election. Okay? Uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not. It's, a, it's an incredibly annoying and insightful verse. Uh, Romans 13, 1, let every person... Be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. So according to Scripture, who establishes authority? <laughs> yeah, we all know the answer. Some of you just don't want to acknowledge it. You see, God knows who will win the election. God is the one who institutes authorities. God decides the election. Now, this is hard to hear, but it's true. Um, we easily embrace this truth if our candidate wins, right? We love Romans 13.1 when the right person wins the election, right? But it's so difficult to actually embrace and be reminded of when our party loses. Now, I don't know if you've thought about this, but I have voted in 11 previous elections, so in case you're trying to do the math, the first one was 1980 uh, and uh, Reagan's year that he won. And, and I, was, I was thinking back on it and I have voted for the winner six times and I have voted for the losing candidate five times, okay? So it's a winning record right now and uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how, uh, how the streak continues. But what I'm saying is, you know, in the process of those things, Every election was an end of the world, end of life, end, the most important election in history of the world, and um, six and five, and here we are. So I, I'm just saying. And, and, and the reality is this, God knows what he is doing. God knows what he's doing. Perhaps through our leadership, God wants to bless us. God, maybe, maybe God wants to bless us through our government. There's a lot of you praying that. Maybe God wants to judge us through our government. I mean, did you ever read the Old Testament? <laughs> or maybe God is letting our nation reap what we have sown. Because we might have been a nation founded on godly principles, but we're not a nation living those out. See, whatever the purpose of God is, God never loses elections. And God will accomplish his purposes in this world. God will redeem through any circumstances, even if we can't see how or conceive of the possibility, uh, God will redeem. So take heart. And I wanna, I wanna give you something to hang on to in case you're stressing out. Take heart because no matter who wins, God is in control of the people who are in control. Okay, God is in control of the people who are in control. Now, some people struggle to believe this because of the evil in this world that's been perpetrated by rulers and governments, okay? That's undeniable evil. So please understand, God doesn't approve the actions of evil men. God redeems the actions of evil men. Okay, God doesn't approve the actions of evil governments. God redeems the actions of evil governments. Let me give you two real-life, real-time cases in point. Okay, example number one is the country of China. You guys have heard of it, right? Okay, country of China. It's been officially communist, which means officially atheist for 75 years. Okay, 1949, that's when it, it, you know, the resistance fell and they've been a communist country. Uh, yet the church in China is growing tremendously. And soon... China will have more Christians as a nation than any other nation in the world. Now you think about, yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? So, so think about this. 75 years ago, 
They became officially communist. They became officially atheist. And they tried to exterminate religion. Not just Christianity, but all the religions. And yet, in that persecution, the church of Jesus Christ grew tremendously. See, God doesn't cause the actions of evil men. God redeems the actions of evil men. So that's first real-time example. Second real-time example is uh, simply this. We're gonna, we're gonna play a little quiz, okay? According to Operation World, they're uh, an organization that, that works with uh, and follows churches in the persecuted world. So according to Operation World, the two fastest uh, growing countries in Christianity, all right, tell your neighbor, go ahead and take a shot, Okay. Lean over and tell someone, what, what two countries do you think have the fastest growing per capita church in the world right now? You guys aren't playing. There's a lot of you just staring. Two countries besides the United States in the world. Nobody's got an answer. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to see. All right, the two countries are these two. Probably not the ones you're thinking of. Iran and Afghanistan. Iran and Afghanistan. How many of you got one of them? Okay. How many of you got both? Okay, like two people. Uh, that's good. Hey, and, and here's the crazy thing. Again, both of those are, are Muslim-dominated countries where it is illegal to convert to Christianity and it's punishable by death. By death. People are risking death to become followers of Jesus like as we speak. I mean, that is one of the coolest truths that exists. So, you know, when... Look, when you're losing your mind between now and Tuesday night. A lot of people are, okay? Just remind yourself, God is in control of the people who are in control. And he's going to be redeeming whatever it is that they do. And, and, and that all makes sense when you understand that our mission is to expand God's kingdom, not our political influence. Okay, let me say that again because we need to hear this. Our mission is to expand God's kingdom, not our political influence. You know, uh, you may or may not know this, but Jesus lived in an incredibly charged political time. Okay, first century Palestine, first century Israel, whatever you want to call it. You know, the Romans actually changed the name from Israel or Judah to Palestine because they were, they were trying to break the spirit of the Jews who lived there because the Jews were rebellious people. And in fact, they were so uh, resistant to Rome that Rome finally got fed up. And in 70 AD, they you know, conquered Jerusalem, they besieged it, and they tore down the, the walls, they tore down the city. They, you know, the temple was just you know, ripped apart, stone by stone, cast down. Jesus prophesied that uh, you know, many times as he, uh, uh, in his life. He, he looked ahead and saw that even on the day of his crucifixion. So... Uh, you know, it was, a, it was an amazing, you know, time. But the, the, the Jewish people, look, they were having all these uprisings and rebellions because the people were looking for a political Messiah. Aren't you glad we never do that? Uh, now, Jesus almost never spoke to politics. Okay, one time he was asked, is it uh, lawful to pay the taxes to the Romans? And, and Jesus answered the question, you know, simply this, whose picture's on the coin? And then he said, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and unto God what belongs to God. Okay, that's political teaching, number one. Second one, he's on trial and Pilate says, are you a king? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my followers would be fighting, but as such, it's not, my kingdom's not of this world. You don't have to worry about me. I'm not a threat to your kingdom. See, what did Jesus actually do? He focused on the mission. It, you know, there was a, an account with a man named Zacchaeus where Jesus ends that night because the, the religious people were grumbling about Jesus hanging out with those kind of people. And, and Jesus said, the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save the lost. And nothing would get in his way of fulfilling that mission. Absolutely nothing. Think about it. Jesus allowed a corrupt political group to arrest him. And then he allowed them to hold a, a mock trial. And then they handed him over to a corrupt politician 
who, get this, declared Jesus innocent and then had him crucified. Right? That, that's the story of the crucifixion. So why did Jesus allow that to happen? Because he's king of kings and lord of lords. Well, he did it so he could pay for our sins. So he could redeem us from hell and he could defeat death so that all of us could become children of God if we confess Jesus as Lord, so that all of us could have a hope of life beyond this world. Right? That's why Jesus did it. So here's the reality. No matter who wins the election, God's eternal purpose of changing lives continues. All right? That's the mission of Calvary, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Hope you know that. We tattooed it on the building, right in the front. And, and I would remind you that in Matthew 28, the end of the, end of the Gospel of Matthew, what's often called the Great Commission, Jesus didn't say, go therefore in all the world and make Republicans. He didn't say, go therefore in all the world and make Democrats. He said, go therefore into all the world and make disciples. Disciples. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And lo, I guess what? And if you do this, I'm going to be with you always, even to the end of the age. So whether the people are Democrats or Republicans or anarchists, whether the people are celebrating or grieving the election and the results that go on, the mission is the same to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And here's the thing, it doesn't matter if times are good or bad. It doesn't matter if the economy is growing or collapsing. It doesn't matter if the world is at war or peace. Our God and our mission remain the same. So, the psalmist, Psalm 20, verse 7 uh, Love this verse. David says, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Now, understand, he was a warrior who was being persecuted for being loyal. Okay? That's reality. He was being unjustly accused, unjustly uh, attacked. And he says, some people trust in chariots, some in horses. In other words, the strength that they have. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. So today, are you placing your trust, your hope in a person to be elected president? Or are you placing your hope and trust in the God who saves? Because the reality is, in a few days, you may be incredibly excited or incredibly disappointed. God has not told me who would win. <laughs> but either way, it really helps if we realize that our hope and our trust is in God and God alone. The God who has said to us, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And that's the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, if we trust God, it doesn't matter what's going on politically. We're still going to treat people with kindness and patience. Because if we don't do that, then we're sabotaging the mission of Jesus. Look, I believe in standing up for what is right I believe in sacrificing for what is right. Uh, I believe that God often calls us to give up our lives for his kingdom. And the question isn't whether he asks us to do that. Or not. The question is, are we going to trust in the Lord our God? So, I'm going to vote. Ah, the truth is, I already have. Anyone else? Early voters? No. Oh, wow. Okay, who's going on, on Tuesday? He's, he's going on to, okay, wow, okay. A lot of us, a lot of us have already voted. Look, the truth is, I'm gonna vote, and I want my candidate to win. Look, I'm, I've prayed, I've asked God, okay? You have too. Uh, but whatever the outcome, Tuesday night or Wednesday morning or whenever. <laughs> right? We've all been there, right? When it, December, when 
Bush the second one? Anyway, um, whatever, the, whatever the outcome Tuesday night, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And this is God's world, and we are God's people, and we are called by God to make a difference. We are called by God to be on mission. We are called by God to love people who are unlovely and wrong. Some of you are going, well, if they're wrong, I don't have to. No, you do have to love them. See, we have been entrusted with the good news of the gospel. And so that means we're commissioned to love people because Jesus loved the people who crucified him. So I'm gonna trust in the name of the Lord my God. Uh, I hope you do the same. Will you pray with me? Father, we are uh, a broken people living in a broken nation in a broken world that you sent Jesus into to save. And we recognize that our brokenness is never healed by politics, whether we win or lose. Our brokenness is never healed by winning an argument, whether we win or lose. Our brokenness is only healed in Jesus. When we trust him, when we yield our lives to him and when we obey him, even when we don't want to. So God, we pray that your will would be done in this election. You know what every person in this room, every person listening online wants that to be, but we pray that your will would be done and we pray that your servants would praise you anyway. That we would love you anyway and we would continue to love people and lead them to a life-changing relationship with Jesus because that's the mission that Jesus came to die for and that's what's happened in our lives and we praise you and celebrate that. So God, thanks for loving us. Thanks for letting us live in the greatest country on the face of the earth and give us the strength to represent Jesus no matter what happens in the next few days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's true what Pastor Chad says. Whoever God votes for will win the election. Don't forget that God is in control of the people in control. Thank you for listening to our message today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel by visiting youtube.com forward slash Calvary LHC and hitting the subscribe button. You'll be notified when we have new content and you'll receive our daily devotionals known as Your Word for the Day. You can also sign up on our homepage at calvaryaz.com. Well, that's all for today. Please join us again next week. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.